Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to turn your HTMX apps into fully cross-platform, lightweight desktop distributions. So the thing that we're gonna to make today is this very simple stock ticker. Uh, it just pulls prices from Yahoo Finances and keeps track of how much of a bag you're holding. So if we take a look at the top, we can see that we have the app's name. We have an about, we have an icon that we can give it functions just like any other desktop app would. And we can even click on here to open a window to get the trading view page for that specific ticker. Naturally, the first thing you want to do is set up your virtual environment. You could do that with this command. I've already set it up, so I won't run it now. And then you can install your uh, requirements with uh, this one, and it's just going to install these few things here. And that's essentially all the Python modules that we'll need for this project. Now I'm going with Flask today as opposed to Fast APIs, most of the other videos to show A, that we don't need a specific backend to work with things for HTMX, and B, it was just a little bit easier to get set up uh, since Flask has its own server versus having to use Uvicorn with fast API. The next thing we'll do is set up a basic endpoint. So if I go ahead and run that file now, so Python app.py, it does nothing because I'm a dummy and I forgot that we need uh, to actually run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here. So now we run it, we have something on port 5000. It says template not found because Flask is super smart and it realizes that I haven't added any HTML stuff. So if I go ahead and create a folder called templates, and then inside that folder, we can go ahead and add an index.html. I'm just going to use Emmet to add something, refresh, and we have something in there. I can go ahead and type, and we have stuff. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to start copying stuff over. We've seen this a million times in all the other videos. So I'll just replace here the title, which won't necessarily matter too much for what we're doing. And then I'll just make sure that we add Tailwind and HTMX. We can go ahead and copy over the body or our app. So essentially, everything that you're going to do is is just you're going to treat it as a regular HTML app, a regular front end development project. So this is just going to be the body of our project. And it's just uh, the usual tailwind things. So setting up, you know, colors and boundaries and all that stuff. And then our HTMX request, which is going to be to slash docs, we'll create that in a second. And then we're going to trigger that every one second, just so we can see that it's actually updating. But realistically, for this project, you know, every five minutes, 10 minutes should be fine. We're gonna be pulling in daily prices, not hourly prices. So it should be fine if you need to make modifications to it. It's easy enough to change this to whatever amount you need. This is pretty much it for the actual HTML file. Uh, the only other thing that we need is the container for the actual stock since we're replacing inner HTML. Um, I'm gonna paste over an example just so we can see roughly what that looks like. So we're gonna have one main container for all of these different stocks that we add. And then we're gonna have a stock element basically. So we're gonna have the title and the price and then it's gonna change colors red or green depending uh, on whether it's up or down. Okay, I'm gonna cut this out here just because we are going to move it over into Flask in order to get that done programmatically. And if you notice, we're already issuing those requests. HTMX is already shooting them out. So we can go ahead and create our endpoint and it should start updating automatically. Okay, so we'll make a little room for our function and then we'll go ahead and create that route. So it's going to slash docs. We saw that in the HTML file. Uh, what we call the function doesn't necessarily matter too much. I'll add some tickers that we want to track. In this case, I just picked the usual suspects. I'm gonna create an empty string. I won't be using the templating engine because I want it to be a little bit more visual, but realistically you would probably use a templating engine to create all these HTML partials or snippets or whatever you wanna call them. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and iterate over all those tickers and we're gonna make a call to Yahoo Finance in order to get that stock data. In this case, we're fetching the last five days at a one day interval. So from that, we're just gonna take the last two items. So last price and then previous price. And we're gonna do some math in order to see whether it's up or down. And this is gonna be the actual element that we're gonna be creating uh, to send over to HTMX's uh, front end. And we'll just create a container. Again, the usual tailwind stuff. We're gonna go ahead and add a line item for the ticker and it's just gonna be string replacement. It's it's all an F string. So wherever we place brackets like that, we can add Python code to it, similar to how you would in something like React or Next.js. So we're gonna go ahead and also add a link that's gonna be encasing our pricing information. So whenever we click on those prices, it'll send us to trading view. So I just went ahead and added the link and then we're gonna be substituting in the symbol. And I just set it to upper in case we make changes later and we decide to uh, you know, add new stocks in lowercase, it won't be an issue. Um, so ticker.upper and then we're gonna go ahead 
and create the container for the actual text for the pricing uh, data. Now, this string formatting right here, text green 500 if percent change is greater than zero, else red, that's going to allow us to change the color dynamically depending on whether the stock is up or down. Next, we'll add the actual percentage change. And we also have another conditional sort of string formatting thing there to show an arrow up or down, whether it's up or down, whether it's up or, you know, whatever, whether the thing is like making money or losing money. And then we're going to go ahead and add the actual percent change and the latest price. And then at the end, what I'm going to do is take all those inner HTMLs that we concatenated up at the top, and I'm just going to put it in its actual final resting place, the container for all of them in order to send that back to HTMX. So if I refresh this here, I was just going to refresh it and it should have worked. But uh, since we were pasting stuff as we went along, it crashed. So I'm just going to run it again. Okay. So if I refresh it, if I, the page now, it doesn't do anything because I realized I didn't actually import Yahoo Finance. So from why? And now if you run it, it should be good to go. So it was just uh, missing Yahoo Finance there. And that's why it was acting up. The dimensions for this, it's going to behave the same way that any of your other HTML apps are going to behave. So act accordingly. Okay. So now that we have our app built, how do we turn that into a desktop app is probably what you're asking or shouting at the computer. And I will answer that in one second. What we're going to be using for that is a thing called Pi Web View. And it's an application that lets you run a browser similar to something like Electron as your front end interface. So we can go ahead and create a script for that that will allow us to take our our Flask application and run it on the desktop. So I'm going to close that window out for a second and I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this run.py. I'm also going to go ahead and close out our Flask server. We won't need that anymore. So in run.py, we're going to go ahead and import web view. We're going to import thread and event from threading, import our app. And this is assuming that you called it app. If you don't, then you can go ahead and you know call it whatever you want. Then we need a way to stop this from running. And this will make sense in a second. The app title, stock prices app, we can set a host. Uh, you probably won't need to change this ever because the whole point is that it's running on your computer so you're not going to be accessing it from anywhere else we can give it a port uh, this should, you should probably set to something that won't be used on your machine since it will be running locally we're going to define our run function which is actually going to launch the flask server and then this is where that stop event comes into play we are going to be using threading to launch the server in the background this is going to make sure that when we close the window we also close the server so nothing hangs if name equals main so if we launch this file directly create a new thread. We're going to set it to daemon mode. So it runs in the background and then we're going to start it. And then we're going to create our web view. So basically what we're doing is launching the server, the Flask server or Django fast API or whatever. After starting that thread, create our window. Now we can pass options that we can use to customize the way that our window shows up. We're going to give it the app title, the uh, host and port that we set up before. We're going to tell it to resizable false. Technically you might not need this if you do want it to be resized height and width. This is very specific to what I put together but it could be whatever your application actually needs. Otherwise, just make resizable true. Frameless equals true because we don't want the border. Uh, easy drag just makes it easier to drag when you don't have the border. And then on top, because I want it to stick on top of everything else. So if you're doing stock trading or something like that, it can stay up top. And then that is essentially it for the options. And then we just webview.start. And this is going to launch our window. And then at the end, we're just going to do stop event.set. And this is what's tying into this is essentially a signal saying, hey, stop the back end as well. And then if we go ahead and and run this, so python run.py, we should see it launch in its own window. And here it is, it's its own application now. So we can drag it around and we can do whatever we need to do. And if we click on it, it'll do that thing where we're launching the window. So that's it as far as creating the actual application, making it something that's more standalone. But what if you want to share it? What if you want to distribute it? What if you want somebody else to actually use it either in your company or, you know, grandma needs a new, you know, bingo app or whatever, like you need a way to be able to share it. And that's where Pi Installer is going to come into play in order to get all this stuff bundled into something that you can distribute to Linux, uh, Windows, Mac OS. We can go ahead and shut this down for a second. And normally Pi Installer, the way that works is you can just literally call the command Pi Installer and then the name of your app. In this case, I'm also going to use the flag dash F, which is technically the same, I think, as one file or something something like that. The idea is that when it bundles it up, it creates one file and then the name of the app that you want to bundle. So if I run this, what it's going to do is it's actually going to start building everything out. I'm going to stop it for a second because what it's doing is it's creating a spec file. So a specification file for the package. And then it's essentially 
where you would make any changes that you need to make as far as things like icons or application name or, or all that kind of stuff. I have one that I pre-built for this project that we're going to use instead of the default. The things that we're going to be changing are mostly related to icons and the specific layout of our project. So I'm actually just going to paste it in. And what you'll notice is that I'm importing OS and sys. Even though it's called dot spec, this is actually just a Python file. So I'm going to set some variables up at the top for our app name and company. This is more of an Apple specific thing. I set up this flag here for whether we want to generate icons or not. I do want to generate icons and I will go ahead and paste those in. It's a money, money icon. And then the data is the only thing that you'll want to change for your projects if you're doing something different, because this is how it copies the files from your local folder into your distributed project. What you would do is just make sure that these are the same. So if you have a templates folder, templates, templates, if you have scripts folder, then, you know, comma, script, scripts, there's a way to actually do it with a tree or a collect. You can go ahead and just see what things you actually need inside of it and just list them here. And if you aren't on Mac, you can go ahead and comment this out. So with all that set up, I can go ahead and run pi installer and then the name of our spec file. And it will just take all of these options and create our packages. Don't have to worry about the build distribution is where our files will actually end up. And now that that's finished, we can go into the distributions folder and we can use our app. Uh, for whatever reason, we have two files that pop up. Uh, one is a basic Unix executable and we actually don't need that. The dot app is the only one we actually need. And if I double click on this, it will take a second to launch. And there it is. Now we can share this. I could just share that file with anybody and it should be easy for them to just launch the app that we just created. So as you can see, this is a very easy way for you to leverage the skills that you already have with Python and the lightweight, very rapid development functionality of HTMX in order to get desktop apps going that you can share with pretty much any, everybody. So hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.